Hi, my name is Catherine and I'm one of the administrators of Galaxy Australia. I'm going to talk about Galaxy tool management with ephemeris. So I'll talk about how tools are configured on a Galaxy instance, what the Galaxy toolshed is and how to install tools from it onto Galaxy, and what ephemeris is and how it can be used to manage tools on a Galaxy instance. A Galaxy tool or wrapper is an XML file describing a software program. It allows Galaxy to display the tool interface and execute the software. The wrapper XML contains definitions of the tool input form and instructions to translate form entries into your command to execute the tool. And the underlying software packages needed to execute the tool command are called requirements or dependencies. And this could be something like SAM tools or BiPython or any number of software packages. A toolshed repository is a code archive in the toolshed containing Galaxy tools. The tool panel on the left hand side of a Galaxy site contains all of the tools available on that Galaxy instance arranged into sections. In this picture, the text manipulation section has been expanded and you can see all the tools within that. There are tools that come with the Galaxy code, such as the uploader, but the vast majority of tools on a public Galaxy have been installed from the tool shed. The contents and the layout of the tool panel are customizable. The contents of the tool panel are defined by configuration files and Galaxy knows about its tools based on what's in these files. The tool conf file contains Galaxy built-in tools and manually added tools. The shed tool conf file is managed by Galaxy and contains all tools installed from the tool shed. The integrated tool panel file contains all of the tools from the first two files and it can be edited to change the layout of the tool panel. For example, you might want to rearrange tool sections in a different order. And these are small snippets of the tool conf and shared tool conf files. The tool conf file contains paths to local tool wrapper XML files. And each tool element is within a section telling Galaxy where to put the tool in the panel. The shared tool conf also contains paths to the tool wrapper XML within the directory structure that Galaxy uses for the shared tools. So in this case, it has um, the file is shovel XML. And the shared tool conf also contains metadata for each tool. So the tool shed is Galaxy's App Store. It's a separate entity from your Galaxy instance, and it's a free service that hosts repositories containing Galaxy tools. It's not a development platform. Tools are usually maintained in open source GitHub repositories and uploaded to the tool shed. And the tool shed can be found at this address. And this is what the toolshed interface looks like. It has thousands of tools, almost 8,000 tools as of October 2020. You can go to the toolshed site to search for tools by name or to browse by category. To add tools to your Galaxy instance, you can do this manually, which is useful for tool development or from the tool shed. And this can be done by the admin user interface or using ephemeris, which we'll talk about soon. And to add a local tool by hand, it can be added to the tool conf XML file, provided that the wrapper is stored somewhere on the Galaxy machine. Um, you can add the path to that wrapper to the tool conf file. There's also a variable in the Ansible Galaxy role for doing this.
and in this case the dependencies need to be installed separately whereas with toolshed tools the dependencies will be installed along with the tool. Installing tools through the admin UI is pretty easy. An administrator can look up any tool from the main toolshed in the admin panel and click the install button. Installing from the toolshed will install the tool dependencies. This is typically a virtual environment containing every package that the tool requires. A toolshed tool might have multiple revisions and this is important for reproducibility. If you use a tool in an analysis on a public Galaxy server, it will be there forever. If you need to rerun your analysis in a year's time, the tool that you've used will still be there, even if there's a newer version of the tool that's been installed. When we talk about the toolshed, we're talking about the main toolshed, but there can be other toolsheds. The test toolshed can be used for repositories that are not yet production ready, and these repositories are public. The toolshed is a web app backed up by a database, and anybody can run one, but it's discouraged to run a local toolshed. By default, Galaxy only accepts tools from the main toolshed. The list of accepted toolsheds is in a file called toolsheds.conf and the default file for this contains only the main toolshed. Uh, though there's a commented out test toolshed in case you want to install tools from there. When installing a repository from the toolshed, the repository is downloaded to the Galaxy machine and the tools dependencies are installed if needed and also, if needed, reference data tables are installed and an entry for each tool is created in the Galaxy database or the tool install database, depending on the configuration of Galaxy. And the tools are added to the shared tool conf. When installing with Ephemeris, uh, you can find the repository that you want to install in the tool shed and install it with the ephemeris shared tools command, which we're about to talk about. Ephemeris is a Python library for Galaxy management. It can be used to install tools, reference data, workflows, and data libraries onto a Galaxy instance. It can also be used to run tool tests. And it's a package that can be installed with pip. It contains commands that can be used to manage tools through the Galaxy API. There's no need to be using ephemeris commands from the server running Galaxy, though you can. And there are links here to the ephemeris code base and the ephemeris docs. One of the ephemeris commands is get tool list. This can be used to get a list of installed tools for any public Galaxy instance, for example, you could get a list of tools installed on Galaxy Europe. An API key isn't required to run this, but some options are not available unless an admin API key is provided. And any Galaxy user can have an API key. Um, you can get it from the user preferences. And so an example of output from get tool list is this YAML list of tools, column maker, BWA, and tabular to faster. And you can see for BWA, there are two different revisions um, corresponding to different version numbers that have just been added here as comments. And each tool has a name, an owner, and a section label. You could actually use a file like this to then install the tools on another Galaxy instance. A Galaxy administrator can install tools with the shed tools command by providing their admin API key. They can specify the name, owner, and section label, or provide a YAML list of tools. 
and there are actually a lot of different options in, available for shared tools install. And so as an example, installing circles. These two examples are equivalent, one and two. Circos can be installed with name, owner, and section label provided as command line arguments, or alternatively, they could be provided in a YAML file. And the advantage of the second approach is that there could actually be lots of tools listed in this YAML file and could be installed all at the same time. If one wanted to install a different revision of Circos, they could supply the revisions argument, but by default, the latest revision of Circos will be installed. Shared Tools also has a command to test tools, run tool tests. A good tool will have tests. Instructions within the wrapper to run the tool with test input and see whether the tool produces the expected output. And also to check that the dependencies have installed correctly and that nothing's gone wrong. You need to be an administrator to install tools, but any Galaxy user with an API key can run tool tests. So you could uh, go and test tools on Galaxy Australia. And the output from running shared tools test will be a list of tool tests that have passed and a list of those that have failed and a more detailed file of data from the test jobs that's useful for debugging. There's a Python library, Planimo, that can be used to generate a user-friendly report from the JSON data. Um, from a Galaxy workflow, from a downloaded Galaxy workflow file, uh, workflow to tools can be used to generate a list of tools. And that's all of the tools required to run that workflow. Ephemeris also has a command set up data libraries to upload shared data to Galaxy. And this is the example of an input file, an input YAML file to set up data libraries, and it's describing two folders with one file in each, and each of these files can have their contents downloaded from a public URL. There's also the function Galaxy wait which sends an API request to a Galaxy server to check whether it's running and able to accept the request. If the server is ready, it will return straight away. If not, it will keep sending requests. And this is useful if you want to run any of the other commands, such as shared tools install, and you don't know when Galaxy will be ready. And so a little more on tool management. This is a picture of the directory structure of a simple tool shared repository. It just contains one tool and it has the tool wrapper, remove beginning XML. It has an accompanied Perl script, which is called from code in the wrapper. It has an input and output test file and shared.yaml, which contains tool metadata. And this is the shared YAML file. The repository name and owner are set in the metadata file. The file also contains the development URL for the tool. And the development URL is displayed as a in the tool shed as a link to the tool's files within their development environment. And this is the GitHub repository you would go to to raise an issue about the tool or to make a pull request to improve the tool. Uh, then we've got Fastscan, which is a more complex tool shed repository. In this one, there are three tool wrappers related to the same software. And installing this repository would add three tools to the tool panel.
Sometimes tools will need reference data such as genomes. Lock files and data tables are used to link tools with reference files. If CVMFS is installed, a lot of your reference data needs will be taken care of. There are also data manager tools in the toolshed for installing reference data for tools and these can be run from the admin panel or using ephemeris. There are also repositories in the toolshed that are suite repositories. And suite repositories can be used to install multiple tool repositories at once. For example, there are many tools associated with SAM tools owned by the IUC, such as SAM tools view or SAM tools mpileup. And installing SAM tools suite will result in all of these SAM tools repositories being installed. And there are quite a few different tool suites in the tool shed. Without going into detail about this file, um, dependency resolvers conf, at runtime, Galaxy will look for installed dependencies in an order determined by the dependency resolvers conf XML file. The file shown in this slide is the sample configuration and quite similar to what is used on Galaxy Australia. So what it means is that given a set of requirements, Galaxy will first look for an installed toolshed package that meets those requirements. And if Galaxy finds this, it will source the package and look no further. If Galaxy does not find this, it will look for a Galaxy package with the required version, followed by a Conda package with the required version, followed by a Galaxy package of any version, followed by a Conda package of any version. And typically on Galaxy Australia, the packages to run the tool will be Conda packages. A more recent development in Galaxy is the use of Docker or Singularity containers to resolve dependencies. And there's some further reading on this and also a tutorial. So the key points from this slide set are that there is a Galaxy toolshed containing thousands of tools that you can install in your Galaxy if you want to. And that as a Galaxy administrator, you can choose which tools are installed, how they're arranged, and that Ephemeris can be used to manage tools. Tool installation with Ephemeris is best practice because you can script it and keep a record of what you've done, and it allows for the automation of tool management tasks. And thank you to the Galaxy Training Network and all of the contributors to this tutorial. Hello again. I'm Catherine from Galaxy Australia and we're going to go through a tutorial on Galaxy tool management with Ephemeris. And this tutorial will introduce you to one of Galaxy's associated projects, Ephemeris, which is a small Python library and a set of scripts for managing and bootstrapping Galaxy plugins, tools, index data and workflows. Its aim is to help automate and limit the quantity of manual actions admins have to do in order to maintain a Galaxy instance. And this is used a lot on Use Galaxy Star instances. And as a background scenario, you could be an administrator of a Galaxy server, and a colleague might approach you with a request to run a specific Galaxy workflow. And in order to do this, they need to have the tools installed. So you need to identify what tools are required for the workflow and install these tools and their dependencies on your Galaxy instance. And so the first thing we're going to do is install Ephemeris on our virtual machines. And we'll do this in a Python virtual environment. 
and the first thing I'll do is make a directory for this tutorial. And go into that directory. So the virtual environment, the Python 3 virtual environment, and we'll put it in our home directories. And it's okay to copy and paste that block, I'm just typing this manually. And then source the virtual environment. And in the environment, install ephemeris. So this is done and you can see that ephemeris version 0.10.6 has been installed. Now ephemeris has a command for extracting tools from Galaxy workflows. The Galaxy workflow files are complex JSON documents. And the workflows consist of many steps, and steps have tool IDs. A tool ID looks like this. It's got the tool shed, the owner, the repository name, and the version of the tool. But to install it with Ephemeris, it needs to be tool shed repositories, and workflow to tools makes this conversion. So for fast QC, it turns into this YAML block with name, owner, and revision. And the section label you can choose, but the default is tools from workflows. So we can try this on a real workflow by downloading the mapping workflow from the GTN. And so copy and paste this command. to get the mapping.ga file and I'll just show you what this looks like. Just the first 15 lines. So it's a JSON document of a Galaxy workflow consisting of many steps. So use the workflow to tools command to extract the tool list from this workflow into a file named workflowtools.yaml and this links to the ephemeris docs and you can see that workflow to tools takes three arguments the workflow or list of workflows the output file and the panel label which defaults to tools from workflows if it's not provided So the command is workflow to tools w flag mapping.ga o flag workflow tools.yaml and the l flag is mapping. Um, you could choose anything for the section label. So I'll use this command copy and paste. You can see now there's a file called workflowtools.yaml 
and if you have a look at that, it's a list of tools, of tool repositories. Um, the next thing we'll try is installing tools on our Galaxy virtual on our Galaxy instances. And to install a tool, you need the URL of your Galaxy server and also the API key of your admin account. So in your Galaxy page, open this up if you don't have it open. From the user menu, you can go to preferences and manage API key. And if you don't have one of these yet, you can create a new one. So copy your API key and keep it somewhere. You might have to use it several times during this tutorial. Um, I'm going to make a variable for it called API key. So I can call on it when I need to. So we'll start first installing a single tool and use the ephemera shared tools command to install pylon owned by IUC into a section named assembly. So this links to the documentation where you can see what arguments you might use for that command. And so the command in this case should look like this. So shed tools install. And your Galaxy URL. Your API key. And then the name, owner and section label flags for Pylon, IEC and assembly. So I'll copy this one. And here I will replace your Galaxy with the Galaxy URL I'm using. Which is GAT2 Oz Training dot Galaxy Project dot EU and the API key that I've stored. Now, if you've taken the Singularity tutorial, you'll have the Singularity set up on your Galaxy and this won't take very long. If you haven't taken that tutorial, this will be installing the environment with Conda and it might take a couple of minutes. So this was done in 20 seconds.
and this is good for a one-off installation but it's not convenient if you want to install many tools. So to install many tools you might use a YAML file like the one we just generated from the workflow. So other, there is an option to watch the installation proceed by running journal CTL FU Galaxy in a separate remote shell. Uh, we're using Viobu, so we could actually split the screen and watch journal CTL on the same screen. And there is a tip here for opening a split screen in Viobu moving between the splits and closing the split that's in focus. So I'll do that now. Shift F2 to open the split and journal CTL. can see the galaxy logs. And I'll go back to the first screen and shift and arrow keys. So now using the shed tools command, we can install all of the tools from the workflow tools YAML file and galaxy. So going back to the documentation, this will be similar to our last command, but instead of using the name, owner, and section label, we can just use the T or tools file flag. And so the command looks like this, um, the Galaxy instance and the API key and t tworkflowtools.yaml. So instead of copying this, I will use the up arrow to find my previous command, um, get rid of the name, owner and section label and instead work, install workflowtools.yaml. And so in the logs, you can see that something's happening and Galaxy is installing the tools. We're starting with FastQC. And this all happens fairly quickly with Singularity. If you haven't got Singularity set up, then this might take a little bit longer. And the last one is BAM Tools Filter. And it's done in less than one and a half minutes. So now there are some new tools on Galaxy that we've just installed. And we can have a look at those in the Galaxy tool panel. 
So if we refresh our galaxies, there are two new tool sections, mapping containing the tools from the workflow and assembly containing pylon. And we can actually import this workflow into Galaxy by right clicking or control clicking on the link and copying the link address. Going back to Galaxy, if we select workflow at the top, we can import the workflow. by pasting the link here. And so now the workflow is in Galaxy, we can have a look at it in the workflow editor. I'll zoom out a bit so that we can see it. Text is very small now. But the workflow is here and it has the input steps and the tools Trim Galore, Fast QC, Multi QC, Bowtie 2, SAM Tools Stats, and BAM Tools Filter. And we can run this workflow on our galaxies now because all the tools are installed. So the next thing we're going to do with Ephemeris is tool testing. It's very important to be able to say that our tools are working. And we're going to use the shed tools command for this to test pylon. And the command in this case looks like shed tools test, then g your galaxy URL and your API key and then the name and the owner, but we don't need the section label this time. I'll copy and paste this. Terminal is a little too big. That's better. API key that I've saved. So testing pilot. And you can see the job running on Galaxy. What it's doing is it's uploading the test input files and running test jobs. We can see it in the logs, we can also see it in Galaxy. So if I zoom in again, and go click on Analyze Data to get back to the main page, we can look at the test history in your histories. So there are two test data files that have been uploaded and two cube pylon jobs. The first time a job is run for a newly installed tool, 
it'll take a little bit longer because the container needs to resolve. So if we look back here, it has run the first test and the first test has passed and it's now running the second test. And you can update this page by refreshing it and it's got three queued jobs for the second test. So Ephemeris is checking not only that the jobs have run without error, but that their outputs match the expected outputs. I'll refresh again. It's taking a little while. And the last jobs are running. Uh, the tool tests are very important. A production galaxy will contain hundreds, if not thousands of tools. And it's great to have an automatic way to ascertain that they're all working as expected. And it looks like this is done. If I refresh the test history again, it's all done and all of the jobs have run without error. And if we look at this, we've got two past tool tests and zero failed tool tests. And looking at what's in the directory, there's also a file tool test output JSON with job data. So piling is working. And uh, the last thing in this tutorial will be obtaining a tool list from a public Galaxy, Galaxy instance. And we're going to get this from usegalaxy.eu or Galaxy Europe. And use the ephemeris get tool list command. So I can open up the docs for this. And there are a few options to include and exclude details. The only argument we need this time is the output file and the Galaxy URL. So the command is get tool list from Galaxy this URL and out to a file called eutoolist.yaml. Copy that and paste it here. And it returns almost instantly, even though there are a lot of tools in the list. If we have a look at the first few lines, it's a YAML list of all of the tools on Galaxy Europe. And if I count the lines, There are 11,000 lines in this file because Galaxy Europe has a lot of tools. We will not install all of the tools from the EU Galaxy server, as that server likely has more tools than any other Galaxy instance, and it would take up hundreds of gigabytes of space, which we don't have on our virtual machines. And a bit about production best practices. Both Galaxy Australia and Galaxy Europe have automatic scripts that regularly update tools that have updates available and systems for automatically installing new tools using Jenkins servers, all using shared tools. Galaxy Australia runs shared tools test on tools at the same time as installing them. Galaxy Main in the US has a Jenkins server that once a week runs shared tools test on all of the tools on Galaxy Main, Galaxy Europe and Galaxy Australia. 
Galaxy Europe's Jenkins server runs a script that uses the ephemeris setup data libraries command to keep shared data from Galaxy training network material up to date on all of the use Galaxy Star instances. And there are some more details about how um, AU and EU maintain their YAML files. Um, one note here is that Ephemeris does not have a function to uninstall tools, although, though there is a function for that in BioBlend. And contributions are appreciated and new contributors are extremely welcome. So this is all open source. And so for the key points, um, Ephemeris and Automation help with the tool management on Galaxy and there are best practices to learn from. There's no need to manage your Galaxy tools manually. Using the scripts makes life much easier and gives you a way of keeping track of what you've done. And so we really love feedback and we're always trying to improve these tutorials. There's a feedback form at the end of the tutorial. And congratulations on successfully completing this tutorial.